have an exciting show planned, and we are on day two of February break. And if you if you don't have plans just yet, you may want to check out where Ashley is joining us from this morning. Oh, Very look cool at place. this, the New Bedford Whaling Museum she in is. the Center Street Gallery. Good morning, Ashley. What's happening? Hey, good morning, guys. You know, this is the perfect day to head down to New Bedford to the Whaling Museum. I'm here with Naomi Slip. She is the curator here at the museum. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank today. you for having us. This is so exciting. So I've actually never been to the Whaling Museum before. So this is my first time here and I'm excited to learn all about it. I think many of our viewers have probably been here before, but it may have been a while or they may have come as they were children. And you're constantly changing things up here right now. We're going to talk polar bears because that's what is the theme right now for February vacation, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for for highlighting all the things we're constantly turning over galleries. One of our current special exhibitions is one focused on polar bears, and this week for February Vacation Week, we're also focusing programming on polar bears. So there's lots happening at the museum uh, for interested museum goers of all ages. <laughs> but if you've got kids at home, uh, we've especially got some fun stuff happening. Yeah, definitely a great week to be here. And, and speaking of polar bears, this is a good place to start because this is the polar bear room. Tell us about <laughs> the room that we're in that you have put together completely. Yes, yeah. So this is a temporary exhibition that we have up until early May and it's called Polar Bears in the Arctic Imaginary. And it's been a really fun show to put together. The museum has an incredibly col eclectic collection, and we've got over 300 things in the collection that picture or are made from polar bear. Um, and so we had a lot of fun going through those and, and creating an exhibition that showcases the history of cultural interactions with polar bears, um, as well as the kind of current situation that, that polar bears find themselves in. So there's a little bit of seriousness, certainly in thinking about climate change and the impact on polar bears but there's also a lot of fun as well in the objects on view. What are the types of things you'll see? As I look around the room here, I'm seeing everything from paintings to different artifacts, books. What are the types of things that people can kind of be on the lookout for when they come here into this exhibit specifically? Yeah, it's a great question. So exactly, there are uh, rare books from the 1700s up to the kind of discovery of the Arctic at the turn of the 20th century. There are uh, works created by communities across the global Arctic as well, so uh, Inupiat carvings and, and um, really incredible things that would have been made for trade in the 20th century, um, like souvenir baskets and um, little carved polar bears. Um, there's contemporary art as well um, by a few different contemporary artists who are really thinking about polar bears and again the theme of climate change and, and what's happening to them. Um, so I think there's a lot of fun things to explore and uh, a lot of different polar bears. One of, one of the fun things we've been doing here at the museum is, is for people to kind of pick out which their favorite polar bear is. <laughs> so there's some kind of like pretty fantastical polar bears. You can imagine the artist never saw one. <laughs> and then there are some that are a little, little more realistic. It must be tough to pick your favorite polar bear. I mean, I feel like they would all be the favorite. And you know, it's so interesting how you go about putting something like this together. Where do you pull from? Where do you find all of the things to put on view? Mm -hmm. Um, well, like I said, we have a really eclectic, diverse collection um, and are really lucky in that we can tell lots of different stories. So the exhibit thinks about polar bears and, and the sort of um, the biology of polar bears and what makes them particularly adapted for the Arctic environment. Um, it thinks about the discovery, quote unquote, of the Arctic and, and kind of what that meant for um, species like polar bears. Um, we've got sections on the um, whale fisheries of the 1700s and, and how whalers came into contact with polar bears and, and what that was like. Um, and then again, we have these fabulous things from communities who are indigenous to those areas and their really long history with polar bears. Um, so we didn't want to focus on just one. <laughs> we wanted to be able to try and give people a, a really broad view of polar bears um, and think about what polar bears mean to them too. Like, you know, is your memory the polar bear at the Roger Williams Park Zoo? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, do you have other kind of ways in which you've encountered polar bears or an animated polar bear or a story of a polar bear? So, um, Hopefully people have those little triggers. Yeah, there's a lot to see here. And as we said, polar bears is a theme. Even if you can't come this week, it's here until May. So definitely come check it out. But we are far from done here this morning. Stick around. We have a lot more coming up. Will, I'm going to send it back over to you. This morning in Family Time, we are not only telling you what there is to do for February break, 
We're bringing you there. Ashley joins us live from New Bedford Whaling Museum, this time from their Big Blue Pictures 3D theater experience. You what there is to do for February break. We're bringing you there. Ashley joins us live from New Bedford Whaling Museum, this time from their Big Blue Pictures 3D theater experience. Ashley, what are you watching? Oh, well, this is so cool. I feel like Ariel under the sea. There is a treasure trove of things to see here. The video we're seeing right now is has an aquatic vibe to it. So I'm just living my best mermaid life here with Jennifer. She's a director of museum experience. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. It's so excited to have you here during Rhode Island's February school vacation week. Yes, we are so excited to be here. We've been chatting all morning with you about just how cool it is here. And you're going to tell us more about why it's so cool. There are so many things to see in this museum, but the thing that we're in now is the 3D theater. Yes, so our 3D theater opened up this past fall and it is the only 3D theater on the south coast of Massachusetts. And we really felt like it was an important opportunity to have that here so that we could ignite learning, which is part of our mission here at the New Bedford Whaling Museum, to both children and adults alike. It also gives us an opportunity to bring award-winning films here to New Bedford, which is exciting. This space in itself is so cool, so we'll talk about that in a moment, but let's talk a little bit more about the programming that you have here that people can see. As we were just mentioning, right now you put on a beautiful, I don't even know what it is, a like <laughs> sea-themed video that we have been entranced by while we are waiting to go live. But what types of things can people enjoy in the 3D theater? theater? Yeah, there are two different movies that we show daily here at the New Bedford Whaling Museum. Uh, the first one is Oceans Are Blue Water, which is an opportunity for guests to get up close and personal with some adorable sea animals, whether it's a dwarf octopus, a sea otter, a turtle, or a sperm whale. It really feels like the animals are a part of the experience, and it gives you a chance to see them in their natural habitat, which is really exciting. The other movie that we show here is Antarctica on the Edge, which is a chance for our guests to virtually explore one of the remotest locations on Earth, Antarctica, and the way that that region impacts our weather, our water currents, and our climate. And, you know, obviously we're at the Whaling Museum. We're in New Bedford. New Bedford is just iconic as a fishing port. So this all ties in so well to really the life that we live right here in New England and specifically on the South Coast. It does, yeah. So everything here at the New Bedford Whaling Museum is connected to New Bedford and the South Coast region of Massachusetts. Obviously, we have whaling, but we also have a chance to explore art and history and science and culture. And the films certainly help us do that and experience um, our visitors get in a new and different way. And the programming goes on all day, every day. How does it work if people are coming for a visit today or this week? What can they expect? Yeah, so the films are offered every single day on a rotating basis. We have two showings in the morning and two in the afternoon. So no matter when you're visiting, you'll get a chance to see one of these great films. They are visually stunning and you can come just to see the films or you can make it a part of your larger experience here at the New Bedford Whaling Museum. And you can be a museum member, is that correct? That's right, yeah. If you become a, new, a museum member, you get discounted tickets to uh, the theater as well as free admission to the museum. So it's a great opportunity to become a member and bring your family down to the museum. And there is tons to see here. We're only seeing a little part of it today, which we're so excited to show people. But even this room alone, as we've been looking <laughs> around here, there's something in every corner, every nook. There's so much to see. How did you, you know, decide to decorate this room? <laughs> yeah, so that happened before that I came, but I think what's important to, you know, have our guests be able to experience and be surrounded by our collection here mm -hmm. at the New Bedford Whaling Museum, which is so incredible. I was sharing that every single day I am learning something new mm -hmm. and seeing something new in our collection. And I think that's one of the exciting things about coming to visit is that you can always see and find something new to discover. Absolutely. Well, we have a lot more to see here this morning. Stick around. We will be back. But for now, I'm going to send it back to the studio.
And welcome back. This morning we have been showing you what New Bedford Whaling Museum has to offer for the kids this February it's break. Great stuff. And so far we have seen a polar bear exhibit and a 3D theater. So I wonder what Ashley is looking mm -hmm. at now. Another mm -hmm. exhibit. And welcome back. This morning we have been showing you what New Bedford Whaling Museum has to offer for the kids this February it's break. Great stuff. And so far we have seen a polar bear exhibit and a 3D theater. So I wonder what Ashley is looking mm -hmm. at now. Another mm -hmm. exhibit. What's happening, Ash, in New Bedford? Hey, I gave you guys a little preview as I stepped aboard. This is the largest model ship that you can walk onto. I'm here with Amanda. She is the CEO and president here at the museum. Good morning. Good morning, Ashley. Thanks for being here. Uh, thank you so much for having us. This has been such a treat, and I am going to let you just tell us everything about this amazing model that we're on. Yep, you're on deck the Lagoda. It was a whaling bark that was in the mid 1800s, set sail from Port of New Bedford. Um, it was constructed as a half size whale ship model by Emily Bourne in mm -hmm. honor of her father, Jonathan Bourne. So you're actually in the Bourne building here at the museum. And people know that name, of course, because Bourne Bridge. I mean, you see the name come up in New England and Cape Cod all the time. Absolutely. And so really it is to honor he owned a number of fleets, um, a number of ships in his fleet. This is an 89 foot half size, right? So double that and imagine what it would be like out in the middle of the ocean. We were pointing to the crow's nest, right? They'd climb up the rigging and they'd get up to the crow's nest and they'd spot the whale. And then these boats here on the back, those would be lowered down mm -hmm. and then they'd go off in pursuit. So it was brutal work. It's absolutely incredible to see even at this size, which as you mentioned is half size. Yeah. How did the construction of this happen for, and, and make it here to the museum? The, so the boat was built first, the building around it essentially. And so all, really truly to honor her father and honor New Bedford as really the hub of the whaling industry in the mid 1800s. There is such a history here in New Bedford. I think this room does a great job of really highlighting that. And it's a, it's an interactive exhibit, which I think, you know, is fantastic. It's hard to find a lot of things like that that aren't specifically play museums. Yeah. You're going to learn a lot while you're here. But the kids, as the sign said when we walked on, <laughs> this ship is ruled by kids. Yeah, so 100%. It's designed for people to be immersed in this experience, both on deck here on the boat, but then also really throughout the entire Bourne building. It does tell the entire global story of whaling. We have the Azorian Whalemen's Gallery right behind you. Above we have the Cape Verdean Gallery. So it's talking about that global story of whaling. And there's a whole program this week if families are able to get out here, um, you know, for polar bears. But even if they can't make it this week, this is always such a great place to come to learn about our area, but also what's going on around us in our own environment. Yeah, I mean, New Bedford's great. I'm born and raised Rhode Islander, but I, and I live there still 30 minutes to get here. It's like half the hassle of Boston mm -hmm. and double the fun, really, 10 times the fun. So a trip to New Bedford anytime, to the museum, to the downtown area, all roads lead to the coast and water. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, great food. Come on down. And you know, as a Rhode Islander, they say pack a lunch, but there's plenty of restaurants around here oh where God. you can have lunch, right? No, the food is delicious. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's, there's hundreds of restaurants right around downtown, but all throughout New Bedford and the whole South Coast. You, you got to got to check it out. It's a really special place here at the museum. I hope you come to check it out this week. We only touched on a few of the exhibits, so now you have to come share your pictures with us on social media if you do come visit, but I'm going to send it back to you in the studio.